Hi, I'm Yannick Hanfman. I'm Ilya Marchenko. I'm Dennis Kudla. This is Sebastian Wolfer. It's Mark Andrea Whistler. I am Francisco Serundolo. And, and you're listening, listening to the Game Podcast. podcast. Hopefully you enjoy it. <laughs> hey, welcome back, tennis fans. It is Indian Wells time, the fifth Grand Slam of the year. And guess who's back? Back again. Nole's back. Tell a friend. And you're my friend, JG. And I'm telling you, Nole returns to Indian Wells. Yep, he's not the only one returning as well because we do have Rafael Nadal fresh Ooh. off his Netflix, Netflix slam defeat to Alcaraz. He's here in the desert playing maybe against Carlos Alcaraz again because I've had a look at the draw and it is something which is possible but highly unlikely this time round. And we're going to be going through the draw right now. This is our reaction. We've only briefly had a look at some of the potential first round matchups. I've not really dissected it in detail until this very moment. But my initial reaction before going into it too much is that I think Yannick Sinner is the favourite at Indian Wells. I know Carlos Alcaraz is the reigning champion, but I've just not seen that impressive uh, level of tennis from Carlos Alcaraz kind of post the Wimbledon win. He's not won an event since then. Um, and this year, he's had a few injury problems. Of course, rolled the ankle in Rio. And the Netflix match, let's not read into that at all, but he didn't exactly fill me with confidence in that. No, uh, I don't think we can look uh, too deeply into the Netflix slam. Uh, I don't think he'll really be putting that one on the same trophy shelf as the US Open and Wimbledon title, but at least he's got another trophy. Like you said, he's been a bit starved of them of late. And maybe this is his opportunity because he was pretty good last year. He'd absolutely demolished Daniel Medvedev in the final so could we see a similar thing happen this year obviously he's not the one who's in the hot form Yannick Sinner is the new kid on the block and there's another old kid on the block in Novak Djokovic who fancy his chances as well but so so with the big four Djokovic Sinner Adkaraz Medvedev Nadal. I mean yeah Medvedev sorry with them four Ben <laughs> What would your assessment be, without speaking about the draw, we'll talk about that in a second, what do you think is important for each one of them to happen in well, the draw? I think the most important thing to happen would be for Djokovic to avoid Yannick Sinner uh, on his side. That would yep. be the most important thing. I'd agree I'd... with that, yeah. I'd say same for Daniel Medvedev. <laughs> I think everybody avoids Yannick Sinner, I think, in this draw. But I think Djokovic... out of them four, do you feel like drawing Alcaraz on his, on your half is maybe the best thing? And I am a massive fan of Alcaraz, weird, and he won this that. event last year. But I think I would rather an Alcaraz. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe um, uh, Raf, um, Daniel, maybe. Daniel Medvedev on these courts. He's not oh. that great. Like it's got the main two players are Djokovic, Sinner. You would think so, wouldn't you? Or yeah. maybe there are uh, some other players out there who have been doing pretty well lately as well. There have been some winners of events who yeah. we wouldn't normally expect. And there are some people who are pitted in parts of the draw. I've seen bits of the draw. I haven't seen the full draw yet. I'm going to give you my reaction as we go through it. But yeah, Dimonor. some very good players. About? Well, he's one of them. Yeah, so... There are other players, obviously Ugo Umber as well. This is another fantastic yeah. uh, storyline. And this is somebody who you've got to watch out for him. He is dangerous. He beat Daniel Medvedev in the last tournament. Uh, well, he is dangerous, but I don't think history will repeat itself here in Indian Wells. It's a bigger event and he may do well, but I would be looking at Alex Dimono as a better competitor. But enough of that. Let's get into the draw proper. If you haven't already, guys, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and let's bring up quarter one. So here is the first quarter, and this is the Novak Djokovic quarter. Some lovely colours here if you're just listening. It is a green and a pink of BMP Palabas that you're seeing there. 
and Djokovic, with a bye through the first round, will play either Vukic or a qualifier in the second round, and then potentially Echeveli in the third round. Nice little section there for Djokovic to start it off, and then it gets slightly more difficult should he get to the fourth round, as we've got the likes of Tommy Paul here and Ugo Umber. Please just ignore Dimitrov, because he's in the next quarter, and Tennis TV has messed it up. Yeah, this is our second time doing it because we didn't realise where Dimitrov was, uh, but he is not in this quarter. And it makes it a lot easier not having to play such an informed player. Umber, though, is equally as tough. He's been in great form, like you, you pointed out earlier. I fancy Tommy Paul, though, to advance on this little bit. Um, but he could have his work cut out with Mickelson. That's a tough one because he's going to have a mm. buy and then go probably straight into it against Mickelson. And if he's just beaten Manar, then he's going to be in some some kind of good form for sure. Uh, Cam Norrie, let's not ignore him. We know what he was able to do at Indian Wells a few years ago when it was played in different times of the of the of the year. Yeah. I forget even what month it was now. November but I remember or something, wasn't it? Yeah, Badoza did really well that year too. Um I think back was that the one Bashas really did well as well. Yeah, he was in the final. <laughs> Strange times. But Cam Norrie has pedigree at this event and it cannot be sniffed at he will be uh, maybe facing off a Novak Djokovic in the quarterfinal if he can get through, say, a Hubi Hercouch and Monfils. You've got Fakina up there, who actually has some really good matchups against Djokovic. He's one of the very few players outside the top 10 who I'd like to see against Djokovic. And I don't think you can name many because every single player outside the top 10 against Djokovic usually goes one way. But with Davidovic Fakina, it has that air of, okay, this is a bit interesting. You could say the same about Kyrgios. Of course, when he plays Djokovic, it's interesting. Uh, but for Kina, I would love to watch that matchup if we are to get it, uh, because they're always fun. I think uh, for Kina would be good against Djokovic. I think he'd probably be more interesting against Djokovic than Kasper Ruud, despite Kasper Ruud being think, in great form Nori. right now. Definitely Norrie. Definitely... Um, you can't Mom ignore Kasper Ruud right now because Kasper Ruud's just made it to back-to-back -back finals. But as would you well. want to see Ruud Djokovic? No, it's I wouldn't. A buy. But I still think that Kasper Ruud has a really good chance because this is a slow. What to beat Djokovic? Time. No, to get to play Djokovic. But do you I think, think this... Fakina, if he got all the way through, he has a chance of beating Djokovic if he's to face him? Mm, better than Ruud, yeah, I think so. Yeah. But that's the thing. And it's like, not saying that Fakin is a better player than Ruud, by the way. No. It's just the way the tennis maths work. It is. It's a weird tennis maths, but I quite like this. Maybe uh, Fees could have a little run here. I'd like to see Fees versus Fakina, but I know you're a big Borges fan. Yeah, that's a fantastic opening round match. Arthur Fees, Nuno Borges, uh, may the best man win. I'll be watching it. So, favourite for this quarter i think most people will agree it'll probably be novak Djokovic. yeah but i'm going to give a shout out to an unseeded player and that's mickelson i'm going to do that nice. for every quarter today so my big one of course Djokovic. will be tough to see him not advance um but the one who could create some surprises i'm going to be going for mickelson nice i like that and not dimitrov because he's not there no he is in the next section. But here he is. Now. And this is the Medvedev section. Of course it is. That's the section that Dimitrov has always been yeah. in. Dimitrov, so. Medvedev, it's just written in the stars. Um, are they going to play each other again? Possibly. Is Medvedev worried? Definitely. Uh, you've got Kabolian as an unseeded, dangerous, suffuding, dangerous, Korda, not in any kind of form but at still all. still dangerous against Medvedev, I think. Injuries, don't see him, don't see him being competitive at the moment. Um, Manorino having a great few well, years a, apparently I guess. he's already out according to Tennessee Bayer has knocked him out they're having a <laughs> terrible time with this draw yeah I just <laughs> I hope it's gonna... even I hope it's right because <laughs> I'm starting to doubt it now with some of these dodgy things you've got Wawrinka Mahach qualifier Muller and there he is Dimitrov at the bottom it's on really the other half one. of this bit this is where it gets exciting so mm. we've got Holger Runa and he'll be playing after the bye against Raonic or Nadal. So the opening round match for Nadal is Raonic. I believe the head-to-head -head is 8-2 for Nadal, if it means anything. Raonic, we've seen him recently in Rotterdam, retiring against Yannick Sinner. I remember watching that one on Sky Sports Tennis. Shout out to them. And Nadal, I watched him at the Netflix Slam. Mm. 
he just looks a little old. Um, I yeah, just don't know if we're going to see him even beat Brownic. And the saddest thing about all of this is, you'd have to say this is probably his last ever hardcore event. <sighs> yeah. Um, unless, is he going to go to Miami? I don't know. I mean... I doubt it. I doubt it as well. He's never done well at Miami. I don't think he's going to try and start doing it now. Um, I think this is his last two raw on a hard court. And I'm laughing probably nervously because it'll be a shame if we don't see him win another hard court match. And if it is his last one, he needs to beat Raonic. Otherwise, his last hard court win would have been, I don't even know, what, Australian Open time? I think he's got it in him though. I think that he can... uh... I think he definitely could beat Raonic. I think that if Raonic... This is two injured older players going against each other. He just needs to take Raonic into a... Raonic wasn't that bad in Rotterdam. Because he went off injured. That's another tournament he's gone off injured. He can't make it to a third set. So if Nadal can push him to a third set... Yeah, but Ben, he did beat Bublik. Yeah, I know it's pretty good. He's good at serving. It's indoors, though. It's a big serving. This is slower court. And at the start of the year, he took the first set against Alex Dimonor Yeah. At the Australian Open. I remember and I watched it. It was a good so, match. So this is why, like, <laughs> I don't know. I, my my prediction is never have found the Dow in three. Ooh, like it. Um, I don't think it'd even get to three. I think if he if it goes one one, I think Raonic may retire. <laughs> that's my opinion. I don't, that's all okay. I've seen from him I've seen him he can't last three sets I don't think what's your analysis of Shapo you got a lot to say about him I know <laughs> I you're a big goes, fan I think he goes out <laughs> <That's> <laughs> what I, think. I don't, don't have much more to say about him right now um, he lost to Andy Murray recently um, that's the level he's at right now so not much more to say about Shapo so, I, I do have a lot to say about Sebastian Bias though because he's won I think it's his fifth title now and yeah. he looks incredible he just won against a Chilean in Chile in the final beaten to Bio in incredible fashion a set down and then absolutely pulverised him in the next two sets <coughs> it was like a, a complete whitewash wasn't it but absolutely brilliant I th- this is going to suit him, I think. I think he's going to be r- like riding high a little bit off of that win, and he's not got a bad section either. And he's got Tobio in there as well. <laughs> Tobio in the section. He's got Zabata Morales, Fanini. All the clay quarters uh, are surrounding him. Yeah. I, I mean, mean what a horrible section this is, though. This quarter is the quarter of death. You've got Medvedev, Fritz. Uh, scroll down a bit. My memory's not that good. Massetti, Raonic, Nadal. Wawrenka, Dimitrov, Runa. <laughs> it's not the best, is it? And the thing is about Taylor Fritz is Manorino? this is probably one of his best <laughs> events. Like he actually could do some stuff yeah. here. Um, Dimitrov, I feel like could do as well. Runa, maybe he's going to come good. It's just a horrible, horrible draw for Rafael Nadal. If Rafael Nadal, by some miracle, gets through this and wins this quarter. We could potentially see a semi-final of Nadal Djokovic at Indian Wells. <laughs> it's very wishful thinking, I think. And yeah, then I've yeah. woken up. Um, yeah. We're not going to see it. I feel the main player to get out of here, I don't think it's going to be Medvedev, surprised or not. I feel like we're going to see someone a bit different. I think Taylor Fritz still has a really good chance, to be honest. I think he, the way he played at the Australian Open was some of his best tennis we've ever seen. I have a feeling Fritz is going to get out of there as well. And the unseeded player to watch out for, if you scroll down, who am I going to go for? None of them. I'll go for Thomas Mahatch. Go up one. Kaboli. Done. Oh. Well, he goes out second round. <laughs> oh, okay, so... <laughs> no, there isn't, there isn't actually an unseeded player I like here, to be honest. Mah- Thomas Mahatch? Oh. No. Friend of the podcast. Not even so that's the top him. half done. Let's move to the bottom half. Well, we've got Mr. Shouter himself. Uh, we know you like bottoms on. based off your last news. Woo. Hey. <laughs> we like uh, Andre Rublev shouting, um, but he is probably shouting for the right reasons now because he's just had his default overturned. And he's got his money back and he's got some points back. So he's probably going to be in high spirits moving into Indian Wells. And he might be playing 
potentially Andy Murray in the in the second round there. That could be a real entertaining match. I'm sure the fans will gather to the court to watch Sir Andy should he get there. But it's no, nothing to give him for Andy Murray these days. I tell you, the qualifier is still going to be a tough match. Yeah, looking at all these names, I think Rublev should be okay for all of these mm. so far. Uh, no one I see who could do some damage. Salundalo, I think, did well. Was it last year or the year before? And he's got some pedigree at this event. Yeah. Shelton in America. Uh, maybe these courts not his best. I reckon he'll do better in Miami. Um, Mensik, the yeah. wild card, Gosh. playing well Shall at the moment. Up. But still, I don't know. I feel Rublev, I've still not seen any names who can trouble him. Well, Mensik TFO recently. Yeah, just don't see him. Don't see it happening at Indian Wells. This is a Masters event. Um, Ofner, exciting for him. He's got born a Chorich. Now he's getting into these big events, getting, know, that, getting that great paycheck in. I'm sure his bank balance will be very happy. Kokonakis, I think, could be a bit of a surprise. Um, oh, saying that, he's not going to be a surprise because <laughs> he's got Yannick Sid out very early doors. <laughs> and this is where it all comes to. So, as much as I'm saying Rublev section is lovely, he then has the best player in the world right now in Yannick Sinner. So, this one, you can look at quarter three as the battle of the gingers. I will be shocked if we do not see a Rublev Sinner round of 16 match. Yeah, I mean, there's still part of me that feels that there are players that could trouble. Well, that's pass. He's there, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he's outside Does the top 10. Does he get past 10. TFO? <laughs> Does Rusevor is in there as well. I mean, there's a, Altmaier. He's just been playing well recently. Beats Verev. It's not a, not a gimme. Lehechka, he's pretty decent. What about you, Banks? Who would you fancy? Rublev, Sissipas. I think Rublev cleans him. Yeah, I think Rublev right now as well. Um, maybe we get off Nasina. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get that match up. Maybe. It's not Maybe. that bad for Offner if he get through, gets through Torrent. Struff, winnable. I think he beat him, didn't yeah, he? In, I think um, he is winnable, that one. Hong Kong, I think he played him in. Um, Sarundalo would be quite happy with his draw as well, to be honest. I know that he was t- tweeting about um, having a really bad run of form and feeling a bit down and low, and there was a lot of other tennis players reaching out to him saying like just don't worry just keep in there and it will your luck will turn around like form is like only temporary like class is permanent that type of thing so yeah and he has turned it around and he's been winning a few matches i think that he could do well again what did he get to semi-finals wasn't it before so yeah shelton though up there danger man the, the matchup i would like to see is shelton sinner <sighs> yeah um and I don't know, like I don't know how Sinner's going to play on these courts. I quite it like to see Mensik too slow Sinner, to be honest. If we can get Mensik continuing a run of form, well, if Mensik's beating Shelton, then yeah, I would like to see it. But I'm I'm not as big on big on him as you are. Yeah, I've had my eye on him for quite a while. Um, I think he was my qualifier to watch. At the this is still the lane. ginger. It's the ginger yeah. quarter. I mean, for me, it's the Sinner wins it quarter. <laughs> that's okay. what. That's all I'm going to put this one down to let's move on to the final quarter to see who could Carlitos little Charlie let's go to Charlie's quarter number four Charlie Charlie and let's see who he's let's got let's go down let's... to Charlie straight away yeah, there indeed. he is he's got a buy he's got Vanasha Alnaudi some people are saying this is a really tough draw I don't I'm not seeing it maybe I'm yeah. missing something um, Felix I mean that's who you'd want to have every day of the week at the moment keep going up you've got Dimano on the other side that's tough of course yeah. Jarry Dangerous Marazan, yeah, it's okay. He's not that great. Mm. Hachanov, good. Drapers there, Zverev, Greek Spore. I feel like Dimonor, Draper, Hachanov. That's where I'm that's where I'm going. But Draper just physically I don't know if he's quite there yet. He did very mm. well at UTS. He had some good results here and there. He did well. I think he took a set off Dimonor recently and then capitulated. I like I would love to see Draper. If the if the weather's not too hot, I think Draper can do all right. <laughs> so British, isn't it? it I he's love relying that. on a nice, cool breeze to help him. Um, him and me both. Thompson, he could come come good. But then I feel like he's in a bit of a bad section with Dimonor around there. Bublik as well. Bublik thompson would be a really entertaining second round match. My man's on Thompson there. Uh, but ultimately... I don't see Alcaraz winning this whole thing. I think it isn't that tough. 
He's the favourite to do it. But my money is on Alex Dimonor. I think this is Alex Dimonor's section. I think he can win it. I think it's a decent one for him as well, considering you just saw the one of the other sections and how stacked it was. This one, he has a real chance of winning it. I mean, he's just coming off the back of a of a tournament win and he's going to be riding high with confidence. I feel like coming into this, Hachanov's come off a tournament win as well recently. So maybe he'll fancy his chances, but I don't feel like these conditions are suited to Hachanov's game. Alcalaz, I'd expect... If he comes back to a bit of form, I think Alcalaz Dimonor will see in that uh, quarterfinal. Saying all this, though, a 7 out of 10 Carlos Alcalaz can clean this section. Netflix slam Carlos Alcalaz goes out. <laughs> I think a 7 round. out of 10 still struggles against Dimonor, and 8 out of 10 cleans the section. Yeah, I mean, but a seven out of ten, we see a good free set match up with Dimonor, and it's quite good and fun. But there's a lot Dimonor of tournament win winners in here, though, in this section. True, Bublik's yeah. won tournaments, Thompson's won tournaments, Hacharnov, Dimonor. This is Draper a in form. UTS. Yeah, <laughs> 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 that's it. Yeah. Alcaraz just won the Netflix man. <laughs> <laughs> we're clutching now I think but Talon Griggs ball he's a really uh, decent player as well so no one will want to play him if he's in good form Zverev not been in great form so this little section anybody's really if they want to try and go through but I think Dimonor is going to be the man to beat on that side yep. so have you got anyone you want to pick out as your uh, what is it unseeded Thompson Thompson lovely like that one I'll uh, join that uh, one with you let's go through some of the players and their potential routes now we'll start with Novak Djokovic it can be well it's a bye then Vukic or a qualifier Echeverri round three Umber or Paul round four Hercatch or Rude quarterfinal then semi-final of Medvedev Runa Dimitrov or Fritz and then the final of Alcaraz Sinner Zverev or Rublev not too sure if we're going to get those two but um, I reckon it's more than likely going to be Yannick Sinner. <laughs> That's my yeah. first. I don't know if I'm going too big, I, but I think it's justified. <coughs> yeah, agreed. Not much okay. to say. Right, so move on to Sinners. Here you go, take us through that. This one um, is a bit tougher. I think Kokonakis, bit. you could see a good match with him. Um, I think the round three will be easier i think round four could only be good if it's shelton in really good form apart from that i don't see the others tr troubling quarter final has to be rublev to make it any to make it interesting uh but still i still i feel like sinner would have enough and then of course semi-final finals where it gets really exciting i think the this indian world's draw the way it's looking we could be in store for some fantastic semi-final and final matches yeah, I think it's been quite if, nice. If we get some spread. good players coming through or playing, I don't even mean we need to get the big four there. We just need like a Draper playing really well, a Shelton playing really well, like some story of somebody who's just blitzing, Dimonor even just blitzing players getting there. It's I don't care who it is. I want to see one of these top players arrive at the back end of the event playing extremely well, beating big names. And if we are to have that, then I think we could be in for a really good event this year, Indian Wells. Okay, let's just go through the other top uh, top two out of the top four. We've got Alcalaz with the bye, then potentially Van Asher or Arnaldi. Round three, Felix or a qualifier. Uh, it's round four, Hachanov, Jarry. Quarterfinals, Verev, Dimonor, Bublik. Semi-final, Sinner, Rublev, Tsitsipas. And then final, Djokovic, Medvedev or Hercatch. So sad, Nadal not even in there as a potential <laughs> for Carlos Alcaraz. Um, his Netflix nemesis didn't even make it uh, but someone who is there is Dimonor and I would like to see that in the quarter final and of course the big story is that we're going to have Sina Alcaraz on the same half so that can't be a final but what a great semi-final that would be Sina Alcaraz in the semis that would be amazing. And as you're talking about Rafa, let's bring his one up uh, just quickly now so we can see who he would be playing should he get to the final. The toughest draw you could possibly um, hope for, really. Raonic, tough. Runa, tough. I mean, Runa in a second round, that's awful. Terrible. Um, third round gets it a lot easier than probably what you had before that. But still, Massetti could turn it on. Um, Fritz, 
dangerous there. Medvedev, Dimitrov, or Cord or Manorino, <laughs> horrible. Semi final, just yeah. I'm not even going to read the rest. <laughs> yeah. If you got past that gauntlet, if, then if he Djokovic gets through and... <laughs> round four, that would be an incredible run for Rafa based off what I've seen in the build up. Yeah. I mean, even if he gets. Yeah, if he gets to round four, it would be amazing. No, it needs to, wouldn't be amazing. It needs to get past round four, then it's amazing. Well, I've not seen that much. I'd need to see something. Extra well, you're just special. a hater, Ben. We know what you're like. You you never picked him when we was going into Roland Garros over the last four years when he's in his prime. Hit when him I well. picked him, he didn't win. Exactly. You don't like him. Well, that's probably why you picked Djokovic to win the Australian Open. Try to no, jinx him. I thought he could win him. Yeah, I know you're game right so let's just quickly look at Medvedev and then we'll wrap this up he has Kaboli second round or Kabais Buena Kordoros of Fulin Dimitrov or Manorino in the round four Runa Fritz Nadal in the quarterfinal Djokovic Herkac Umber or Rude in the semi and then Alcaraz Sinner in the final the real takeaway from Medvedev is that he gets to avoid Sinner because that's the yes. one man he wouldn't want to play so soon after the Australian Open, he doesn't like him in finals though. Yeah, I don't. I don't see Medvedev making the final. Just lost yeah. to one, but and these courts, I think, could be slightly slow. I feel like he gets frustrated with them. I remember one year was he one smack in the floor saying, "This is not a hard court. I'm a hard court specialist, and this is not a hard court." <laughs> Yeah, many outbursts from. Uh, we could we could sure see that. a Daniel outburst, and I'm here for it. Right, well, um, that's it. That's our reaction to the Indian Wells men's draw. Make sure to hit a like, subscribe and join us for the women's draw. That one will be coming in a few hours time. So stay tuned for that one too. Yeah, and we've actually got to do our draw, right? Are we not going to be doing that this year? What's that? Yeah, yeah. We're actually gonna... going to be putting the draw. So join us for that where we're going to put in all of our selections and you can play along at and home. play a roulette as well. Yep. So if you haven't already, please hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Let's go, Rafa. We can win this one. The draw is easy. You're probably going to walk it. And I think Djokovic is going to really struggle here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. He's going to probably be... There or thereabouts. And my dream is to see Djokovic Sinner. I think that is the best tennis matchup we can get at Indian Wells. I hope so. Um, let me rephrase. It's not my dream. It's just the best visual match. I think um, I want to see how Sinner responds on this surface. And I think it will give a good indication of how them two would play on a clay court against each other right now. And that's what I'm kind of building towards with Ronald Garros around the corner. But thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you very soon for more Indian Wells draws, reactions, and a lot more.